Threat Grid is Cisco's advanced automated malware analysis and threat intelligence system. Cisco's advanced threat solutions engineering team is constantly adding new functionality and features to this powerful tool, but this recent update is worth a closer look. In late 2017, Threat Grid got a significant facelift to the main dashboard as well as new sample management functionality. These two features combined allow you to more quickly and precisely pinpoint the information that you're after. This walkthrough is not a guide to how to use the product or to what it is for. I highly recommend that you familiarize yourself with the available materials on those topics first if needed. This video is strictly to demonstrate the new dashboard and sample manager. Hi, I'm Ben Greenbaum with Cisco's Advanced Threat Solutions team and I'm going to show you these changes. When you first log in, you're presented with the dashboard and immediately the difference is pretty obvious. We have some thumbnail images of previous and current sample submissions. We have this bar of numbers across the top showing some high level statistics. And we have a number of graphs and charts below showing some additional statistics and trends among the samples that were submitted during the time period shown. That time period can be adjusted up here where you can select one of the three available presets. Additionally up here you can select whether you want to see only your own samples or all samples that have been submitted by your organization. Note that while I make these changes the dashboard reacts and adjusts the information displayed accordingly. Note also the speed of the changes. Dashboard reaction time is greatly improved in this release. And the next time you view the dashboard it will remember these settings as well as all the other options we're going to cover. This very top bar right below those options gives you some high level numbers and statistics about the sample set that is included in the current dashboard settings. Average analysis time with a percentage change over the last 30 days, average threat score with a percentage change, the number of convictions, the submissions, the number of unique submitters, and the number of unique file types submitted, all with the percentage change over the previous period as selected in these options up here. Of course, if you go to My Samples, for example, you'll see that Unique Submitters drops to 1. If you go to Last 24 Hours, the percentage changes are all shown compared to the previous 24 hours, etc. The next thing below these numbers is the bar of recent samples in which you can see all of the sample submissions that have happened recently. For the ones that are currently being analyzed, you'll notice that you actually get a thumbnail of the console of the virtual machine in which the file is currently running. For completed samples, you will see these green checkered flags for finished or an X for failed, depending if a unsupported file type was submitted, for example. For all those that have completed successfully, you will also see a threat score at the bottom and color coding to show how significant of a threat the file was shown to be during analysis. You can click on any of these to go through to the sample analysis report with which you're most likely already familiar. Below the recent sample bar, we have all the graphs and charts. The first chart shows us a count by threat score range, critical, high, medium, and low. And for each of these, you can click on the chart element and go through to the sample manager showing you the list of samples that contributed to this portion of the chart. That's true for all of the charts in the dashboard. The next chart shows us total per day counts of samples analyzed by what the result of that analysis was, whether it completed successfully, whether the file was whitelisted, whether it was of a file type that's not supported, some other results or failed analyses. This chart and a few of the other charts also have these icons in the top right hand corner which you can click to change the information that's displayed. Here we have total submissions per day by threat score. And again you can see per day the breakout of threat score ranges similar to the first graph that I showed you here over the entire period but now broken out per day. On the next row we also have two charts, the first simply being a line graph showing the conviction rate over time throughout the period. And the next chart is a bar chart showing the breakout of what the results of the analyses were, in turn broken down by the source of where those samples came from. Now this is very interesting for some of our customers because for the first time they can easily visualize what's going on with their different sources of samples that feed into ThreatGrid. If you recall, this was the initial state of the chart directly above it, and like the chart directly above it, we can also switch to break these samples out by not only their source but also their resulting threat score range. I'm not going to walk you through each of the remaining six charts. They're all fairly self-explanatory and well documented in the help files up here. But I do want to point out this on the right is the API sample submissions chart showing you what your submission counts were for each day and how close you are to the red threshold line. 
And these bottom three, showing tags, IP addresses, and behavioral indicators, where each one is color-coded to also show you the average threat score of all of these samples that were relevant to that item. So all of the samples that had communications with this IP address here, for example, the average of those threat scores was in the critical range of 95 to 100. And all of these elements are, of course, clickable and will take you to the sample manager, showing you the relevant samples to the item upon which you clicked. Now, to recap, we have this set to my organization over the last 30 days. This concludes our tour of the dashboard, but let's go look at the sample manager, and let's do that by clicking on one of these chart elements. And here we see the sample manager. Then you see that we have some samples loaded up. They all are in the 95 to 100 critical range as we specified. They have been submitted by different members of my organization. And if we go to the very last page, we can see that they were all submitted in the last 30 days, matching the data elements upon which we clicked in the dashboard. For each sample displayed on this page, there's different information available. We've got the name of the sample, the hash, what kind of file was it, the threat score, the count and severity of indicators that were observed in the analysis of this sample, including a more detailed breakout and a mouse over pop-up, the date that it was submitted, the user that submitted it, whether it's public or private, the final status of the analysis, in this case all of the analyses on this page were completed successfully, and a number of actions that can be taken. You can watch the playback by clicking the play button, or you can click the three dots and have access to a menu of various downloads and other actions that you can take on that sample. That's everything that we get in the summary row. Moving back over to the left of the name, if we click on this expansion arrow, we get some additional details, including some additional hashes, some timestamps, and other analysis details, and a longer list of the behavioral indicators with their severity ratings and clickable links to get more information about each. You can also select multiple samples using the checkboxes to the left of their names, and then go into this actions menu here and download in bulk the reports, analyses, PCAPs, or process timelines of all of the samples you have selected. That's the bulk of the contents and functionality in the main pane. On the left, we have the filters pane. This allows you to precisely drill down to a very specific subset of the samples in the system. This replicates some of the functionality you may already be familiar with in the advanced search tools up here. You can still use the advanced search to pinpoint IP addresses, domains, and other observables of interest, but the sample manager filters allow you to do all the same things when searching specifically for samples with some new added search criteria as well. The top section is largely the functionality from the advanced search. You can search freeform or against any of the specific data types in this button list. Next, you can filter by sample owner. Everybody or your organization or your own account. You can see that my organization is already selected due to the dashboard chart element that we clicked on to get here. Next is the date range with 30 days pre-selected because again of where we clicked and we can set a custom date range here as well if we want. We can of course filter by threat score range. Critical is pre-selected for the same reason again because of how we got here but let's add a couple more. And we can filter by source. In my organization, most of these submissions are done manually by users, so let's filter on that. And we can also filter on status of the analysis and on the access level of the sample. And we can reset all of our options down here. But first, let's go back up to the top, and I want to show you this. Click on these three dots here, and you get one single option, show query information. If you click on that, you then get an API URL, an example curl string, and some additional information that will allow you to use the API to get back a list of the sample IDs, the same as you selected by using the filtering in the UI. Very powerful feature when you want to automate certain functions. So let's run through a real quick use case. Let's reset all of our filters. Now let's say that for whatever reason we are concerned about crypto miners. So we'll put that in as a free form filter. We want to see all samples from my organization. We only want to see samples from the last 24 hours. And we want to see samples that had either a critical or a high threat score. We want to see all sources, so we leave those blank. We want to see all statuses and we want to see all access levels. And here we have some results. We can select all of them, and then we can download all of the reports, analyses, PCAPs, and process timelines. 
We can select individual samples and hit the drop down arrow to get a list of the behavioral indicators and some other information. If we want to automate this and run this search every day, we can hit these buttons here and get the API URL that we would call and get the curl command if we wanted to put this into a shell script. We can click on that and get the returned information in JSON format so that we have a target that we can write our script to so that it can handle the information that it's going to get back from that query. Let's go back to the UI and I feel like I should point out that there is no query string elements in the API for the last 24 hours. So your script would have to calculate these before and after timestamps and insert those into your call. That being said, I want to point out again that there's the help documentation up here at the link in the upper right and that you can use this link to samples to get back to the sample manager from any place in the web UI. You don't have to go through clicking a chart element on the dashboard. And there you have it. That was an overview of the latest features in ThreatGrid at this time and a walkthrough of a simple use case for the sample manager. I hope you found this video useful and I hope you and your organization find the features themselves useful. Thank you.